So if I come on here, all I do is go bang, drag it down, move it, there's a border. Now what I want to do, every time, like I said, bring in a new image, add a new layer. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a video for my YouTube. <laughs> Wait, break, bring the, bring the rabbit in, let oh, everyone see. Studying. Yeah, I am. I decided to make a video and then study. Point it up to the camera. Everyone, here's my rabbit. <laughs> it's named Bunny. You know hundreds of people are going to see this Wait. on YouTube. Just show, look at the rabbit. <laughs> Alright, you can go there. We get we get the rabbits here. I'm showing them how to do something. I'm... Can you shut the door too? Yeah, I was meant to tell you don't distract me. I'm making a video, but then I thought, screw it. Alright, what's up fellas? Inky here. So today I'm going to be doing a little thumbnail tutorial because about a week ago now I did upload my Q&A video and in that video I asked you guys if you wanted to see a thumbnail tutorial. A couple of you fellas did leave some comments below on that video asking for a thumbnail tutorial so I thought I might as well do it. Now this is a long due video. It should have been done about a week ago now but I completely, completely forgot about it till now. Now I did originally actually make this video already and I uploaded it as unlisted but I wasn't happy how it turned out. It was way too long. I didn't think you guys were going to watch the whole thing but today I'm going to be doing a video through paint on obviously how to show you how to make thumbnails now the reason I'm doing this is I know before I started making thumbnails I was unsure on what software to use and how to actually do it once I got the software but I highly recommend guys using paint that is the software you want it's a free software very easy to use you don't need Photoshop any of that that costs money it's a lot more complex and honestly it's just not worth it you don't need it so if you want to download paint just go on Google type in paint download click on the first link bang you've got it anyways guys the thumbnail we'll be making today is a video I actually uploaded two days ago now it is this one here my clip of the week thumbnail so I'll actually take you through this and how to make it it's pretty quick pretty easy so uh, yeah we might as well get straight into it so first things first when you come into paint you want to get a background I'll just actually move this up so you guys can see now the reason I didn't like that video I originally uploaded is because I had my face cam here in the top right and it was covering everything I was clicking on so yeah we're doing this video again but anyways guys first thing you want is a background now a background can either be if you don't have a good editing software where you can take a snapshot of a particular image you want you can simply come on Google for example if you did a Modern Warfare 3 gameplay you could come on Google type in Modern Warfare 3 lockdown go images and save that image however the recommended thumbnail size for YouTube is 1280 times 720 pixel size so that's the size you want if you ever want a certain map just type in that and then you save the image and then you simply come on paint you click this part here and you import it how it import it sorry however I'm not going to be doing that because I do have a pretty cool groovy software here called Sony Vegas so the reason for this will just this is what I'll be doing to get my background like I said you can get the map you can get whatever background you want just type it in on Google but I'll be getting this one for the purpose of this video so this is basically what I'm doing on frame by frame here and I'll just get the image I want. So where the frick is it? All right, so the image is basically there when you see him shoot. Now what I'll do here is click this button here, save snapshot to file. You guys, like I said, might not have a powerful or a good editing software like this. If you're using Movie Maker, you won't be able to do this. That way you have to go on Google and get an image a different way. But yeah, save snapshot to file. I've already done that. So what I'll do here, come on to paint. I'll open the file and here it is. This is the one. I've already saved it. <clears throat> now, first thing, guys, I probably want to tell you, this is how you zoom in and out on paint. So if you want to zoom in, make the image smaller, use this, and obviously zoom in with the plus. So that's the first step. Now, first step of making the thumbnail, like I said, you want to get a background. I've got a background, so that's the first step completed. Now, what I want to do with this photo is always make sure it's the correct size. So like I said, the thumbnail size for YouTube is 1280 times 720. This box will be ticked. Untick that, and then type in 1280 tab 720. So here it is, there's the size now, so I'll be able to upload that onto YouTube successfully and easily. So now that that's done, I want to play around with the image, make it look a little cooler. So first thing I do, the, always my very first effect I do, just make it look a little cool, gives it a spotlight effect. Go effects, photo, and click on this one here. You can change the size of the spotlight you want, I'll just keep it like that. Bang, there it is. Now what I'll normally do here, guys, is because my photo's dark, and what I actually do, I'll show you guys real quickly. Pictures... I'll control copy. You guys don't need to do this. Right, this will only take two seconds. Another thing I haven't actually mentioned. Every time you add in a new image or a new text, a new whatever, always click this button here and add a new layer. If I was to, so right now I'll show you. If I was, so I'm going to bring this in a new layer. So as you can see, I can move this image without moving the background image. But if I was, here we'll get rid of that. Actually, we'll just delete this. 
if I was to put it on the same layer here, you'll notice that when when I was to so if I go like that and I decide to get out of that, when I decide to move it, you notice everything moves, not just that one image. That's the reason you need every time you add in an image or a text, always put it on different layers. So we'll just keep backing out. So, like I said guys, make a new layer every time you need an image. Now what I normally do here, I use this little tool here. This way I just cut things, you simply highlight the part you want, you delete it. You guys get the point, just go like that. And what I'll do, I will, to move it, you click this. And obviously I haven't deleted this part, but I'm not going to show you. What I'll do, I'll actually chuck that in there, I'll make it bigger and stuff. So obviously you make it bigger, whoops, you can rotate it if you want, you make it bigger like that. You zoom out so you can see this part, you grab it, you make it bigger, very simple guys, but I'm not going to bother showing you, I don't need to show you that part. So once you've got your background, you added your cool little effects, what I always like to do is add borders to my videos, if you haven't noticed, I always have a border, so to make borders, like I said, I'm adding a new image, so make a new layer, click this rectangle here, the shape image here, hopefully you guys can see that, so yeah, click the shape image, make the brush width about 500, I'll just make it as big as it can go. And this is where you change the colors, so your colors are here. If this box isn't here, which could happen, simply click this button here and this is how you bring up your colors. So I want it to be, as you guys can see, my border in this thumbnail, sorry for the dog barking in the background, it's not my dog, it's next door. As you guys can see, I've got a blue background, blue border, sorry. So if I come on here, all I do is go bang, drag it down move it, there's a border. Now what I want to do, every time, like I said, bring in a new image, add a new layer. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a video for my YouTube. <laughs> Wait, break, bring the, bring the rabbit in, let everyone see. Yeah, I am, I decided to make a video and then study. Point it up to the camera. Everyone, here's my rabbit, <laughs> it's named Bunny. You know hundreds of people are gonna see this Wait. on YouTube. Just show, look at the rabbit. <laughs> All right, you can go there, we get, we get the rabbits here. I'm showing them how to do something. I'm, can you shut the door too? Yeah, I was meant to tell you don't distract me, I'm making a video, but then I thought, screw it. Alrighty guys, so once you add in this border here, like I said, always add in a new layer when you're bringing in a new image, do it again. And simply do that all the way around, you guys get the point. So once the borders are in, I'm not going to do it actually. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing it, I don't think we need to, that take up too much time. So once you get the borders in, next thing you want to do, add a new layer. This is where I always add in my text, so as you guys can see here, I've done You Guys Are Crazy. Now your text on your thumbnail, I normally like to have it different to the title of my video. So as you guys can see, the title of my video is Inky Clips of the Week, hashtag 10 dongers. But I like my thumbnail to be a something a little different. Normally a message to you guys. So obviously my thumbnail, I titled it You Guys Are Crazy. That's because you guys keep sending me crazy clips for my Clips of the Week. So it's freaking You Guys Are Crazy. So that's the reason I did that. So right now I'll show you how to do text. All you do, click this T button for text. And I always like to do my text in cap lock, so I'll type U. To change the size, obviously you go down here. And to change the font, you use this. And I actually installed the Batman font a couple days ago, which is the same font that the um, Phase logo is. So yeah, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool font, so we'll find it. Here it is. U. Bang. That's in. We'll get rid of this. So now once that, that's in, to rotate it, move it, click this button here, this little pixel thing. Click on that and you can simply rotate it. As you guys know, I always like to have my text on a slant, so I do that. Once you've done that, guys, I highly recommend you do this. It makes it look a little cooler, a little effect. Go photo, go to glow. You guys can play around with this. That's how I learned what all these things do. But this is a cool little effect. Go glow. And as you guys can see, it makes you look a little cooler. I like to bring the radius up, the brightness down. I don't like it too bright. There's good. And I like to bring the contrast up normally. Ah, oh, there's about good. So there's the U. Get out of that, that's done. Now remember what I said guys, every time new text, new image, make a new layer. So bang, new layer. And then I'll simply go T and I'll type you guys. And then this time when I add in the glow, I don't actually need to change the settings because it'll be the it'll be the exact same settings that I did on my previous one. So bang, okay, as you guys can see, the glow for the U and the guys is the exact same, so I don't need to change that. Once again, I would click on this, I would rotate it, I would bang, chuck it in, boys and girls. You guys get the point, so I'll write, you guys are crazy, bang, that's done. All on new layers, remember adding new layers, don't forget about that. Next thing is importing images. Now, this is very important. <clears throat> when you guys import images, they must be transparent. So, for example, if I was to just type in fire right now, all right? We'll get this image, we'll copy it. And, oh shit, that's, my, that's what I'm recording with. 
Yeah, that's what I'm recording with. All right, so we'll bring in the new image. Now, what you'll notice, this is not a transparent image. This is the reason you don't bring in transparent images. What you'll notice is this black part covers up the whole, my whole thumbnail. So obviously you can't do that. Every time you want an image, you want an important image, make sure, all right, we'll scroll up. Make sure you type in, so I want fire transparent. It must always be transparent. And that basically means, I'll show you. So this is the one I always use. You'll notice it's not transparent yet, but there's a uh, loading bar at the bottom. As soon as it loads, you'll see these little pixelated dots in the background. That means it's transparent. You can't copy the image straight away. If you copy it before it's finished loading, it won't be transparent. So wait for the loading bar at the bottom to be finished until you see these pixels. Then you can copy the image, bring it into Paint, Control V to paste it, keep canvas size. And what you guys will notice, this is the fire I always use. Now you can minimize this, make it bigger, smaller, do whatever you want. And what you guys will notice is that the fire is actually covering my text. So if I was to put it here, you, you can see you can't see the text. Now to fix that issue, all you do is move this down. This simply means that the fire is behind the text because that's a text layer. Here's the fire. So all I do, simple as that, bring the fire behind the text. Now you can see that it's simply behind the text. I'll just quickly do some for one sec. All right, so this is all I do. So now I've got the fire behind the text. I add it in. And what I like to do when I do this, I can you can use this button here to actually, you could do stuff like this, what not I normally do. So highlight that, delete it. This is the reason you put on new layers, guys. So you can do this, see? And I'll just leave that side of the fire, as you guys can see. Here, I've actually, so I've deleted that part, but I, I put more effort in, I made it look better. So I still got the ashes and stuff all over here. But you can see that I've only left that side of the fire, so there's none on that side. So that's simply what I've done. And uh, yeah, that's really about it for that part. Just remember, put it on different layers. If this fire was on the same layer as my text, if I was to go like this right now, the um, the fire would not only get deleted, but the wire would also delete. So right now when I delete it, you'll notice that the guys part is still there. That's because it's on a separate uh, layer. It won't get deleted. So as soon as I click delete, only the fire deletes, not the actual the text. So once again, remember to always put in new layers. I've said that enough, but trust me, when I use paint, I never did that. I'll stuff something up, go back to fix it, and I couldn't. I was screwed because I'd all move at the same time. It stuffed it up. But anyways, that is that part of it. Next part I want to show you, I decided to do something a little different to my thumbnails. That was to add in a subscriber count. So when I did my Q&A video, I was on 1,500 subscribers. When I did this video uh, two days ago, I was on 1,625, as you guys can see. The reason I'm doing that, I think it's a good way when I go back to my videos, I can see how many subs subscribers I was on at that point in the video. I honestly think that would be pretty cool. Just a way of, you know, seeing how many subs I've gained since that video. It's just, yeah, a cool little nifty thing I do. Next thing I'll show you fellas to do is add some cool effects like this glowing. You can see the glowing behind the subscriber button, all stuff like that. So all I did for that, just like the fire, super easy and simple to do. I just typed in transparent glow. And because I'm going for a kind of bluey background look to my image, I decided to use this one. See how it's white, it's loading, and now it's transparent. So that's when you copy it. So all I did here, guys, once again, you want the layer to be behind everything, behind the fire, behind everything. So you can add the layer at the top there and drag it down, or you can simply come all the way down to the bottom here and then add your new layer so it's already behind the stuff. And just remember, don't put your layer behind the background. If you were to do that, you wouldn't even see the image. So it's got to be above the background part. Control V to copy it. Bang, here it is. We'll just zoom in a bit for you guys. <clears throat> and this is all I did here. I'd simply put it behind the wire. I might have made it a little bit smaller and chucked that there. So when you guys come here, you can simply see there's my glow behind the wire. That's all I did, fellas. Obviously, I put more effort into it. And then I got my subscriber button. To do my subscriber part, I just simply went like this. So we'll scroll up. Pretty easy, guys. Hopefully, this video really helped you, fellas, because I know I wish I could watch a video like this. This is all I did, guys. Transparent subscriber. I copied that in. I put that in. And then once I had the subscriber button in, I copy and paste it. I simply went to the rectangle again, brush width 500, and I made this white. And all I did here was went like that. And then, yeah, I just put that in there. And then I, once I had the white, so I had the subscriber button here. So you see, I had the doo -doo -doo -doo, subscriber button, added in that white rectangle, made it the same uh, width as my subscriber button. And then all I did is put the glow behind it and simply made a new layer. I added text. And then I typed in 1,625. And then obviously I'd make that a different color like black. Also, if you want to add more colors, fellas, simply click more. And then look, there's black. And then, yeah, simply I made the text small. Obviously, I rotated it so it fit there. And that's why I got my subscriber button. So I believe that is it. All I, oh, yeah, one last thing before we're done. 
when you save, as you you want to save the image as you go. So as you're going through it, go obviously save as. Save it as a paint file. Don't save it as a PNG or anything. Save it as a paint file. That way when you go back to it, you've got all these different layers here. If you save it as a PNG and go back to it, what will happen? This image will save. This image here will save all as one layer. So if you wanted to, for example, come back to this image and decided to move that text or make it a different font, you wouldn't be able to because it's all on the way on one layer, which means you can either you have to move all the whole Im image as a whole. You couldn't move it individually. So make sure you save it as a paint file. That way you have all the separate layers and you can still move it. But once you're done completely and you're really ready to upload it to YouTube, once again, make sure that the image is, is 1280 by 720 pixels. That way you can upload it to YouTube. But all you got to do is click down here. You can save it as a PNG. And once you do that, you save it, you upload it to YouTube. Simple as that. I'm pretty sure you can save it as a GIF, GIF, whatever it's called, a PNG, a GIF, or a JPEG file, I'm pretty sure. So you can save it as any of those three. That way you'll be upload, able to upload it to YouTube. If you save it as a paint file, you won't be able to upload it to YouTube. So it's got to be a PNG. But uh, yeah, guys, that is it. That's how you use paint. So it's pretty easy. Once again, your colors here, zoom in and out there. Always make sure you bring in new layers for different texts or images. This is where you can cut stuff, delete it, and this is how you move stuff with this here. Bring in text by pushing the T. Here's your paint. You can bring in paint to you, obviously. See, I could add in, I don't know, a rectangle right now, for example. I'll quickly show you guys. So I could bring in a rec... Oh, shit. Hold up. So I could bring in a rectangle like this, and I wanted to fill that up for color. All you do is click on paint, go bang. You can change the colors here, purple, whatever. Simple as that. And uh, yeah, that's all I really got to tell you. Hopefully this uh, tutorial did help you because I know I would have definitely liked to see this before I started making thumbnails because I'm unsure on how to do it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty. That's all you really do. So once that's all done, you just once you upload your video, you click custom thumbnail, double click on your image, and bang, it gets uploaded to YouTube. So uh, yeah, that's how I make my thumbnails, as you guys can all see here. Normally, obviously, I haven't put much effort in here because I've just <laughs> was trying to show you. You guys get the gist of it, anyways. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I know this video wouldn't be relevant to a lot of you fellas, but it would be relevant to some of you guys because you probably want to know. Anyways, guys, that is it from me. Hopefully I have a pretty cool trick shot face-off uploaded on the weekend. We're going to have a challenge tour at the end of it. I'm not sure what, but uh, yeah, that's it. Anyways, guys, hopefully you all have a great day. I'm out. See you later. Peace.